This morning, I want you to um, uh, read a passage first, uh, Psalm 126. I, I have it on the, on the screen, okay? Let me get it ready. Okay, Psalm 123, 20, 26, I mean. Let's read it all together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with joy. Shall joy. He who goes out with weeping, bearing the seeds for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is a f familiar song for most of us. I don't know which part you like the best, the song. In the middle of the song, it says that God, the Lord, has done great things for us. The Lord has done great things for us. For Israel people, this song particularly talking about uh, returning from exile, according to some commentaries. It is a great thing because for Israel people, they were able to come back from a terrible time, from their exile, living as a slavery, just similar to uh, the time they spent in Egypt. God allowed them, bring them back from exile so they can come back to rebuild the country, to rebuild their home. And they look forward to this day. So when it happens, they said, they're so, so full of joy. Not only that, but also the people that are surrounding them, the other nations, people that, they were not Israel people. They, they are very surprised. They, they are, they, so they say, the Lord has done great things for them. And the people of God, they say, yes, the Lord has done great things for us. For this song, I like this verses, the last verse especially, because it says, he who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This phrase, this verse, has a contrast, very, very vivid contrast. The one who goes out weeping will come back with shouts of joy. The one who goes out with seed for sowing, just, just a singular seed, but he will come back bringing sheaves of grain with him. What a contrast. Going out with tear, weeping, coming back with shout of joy, going out with just a couple of grain of seed, but come back with sheaves, with bunches, with a lot of grain, a lot of, it's a great harvest. And this particular verse is a promise because God has done great things for us, not only, not just because we went out and weep and we do what we need to do, but most importantly, God is working great thing. God is making all this happen. So when we come back, we'll be filled with joy and also bring sheaves with us. We need to work, we need to work. We need to go out, we need to maybe, we need to sweat and labor and all that stuff. But the promise is God is working 
with us. And He's done great things for us. So we can come back with joy and come back with harvest. Uh, I often use this passage to encourage, especially when we go out to do evangelism, go out to do missions. We use this passage a lot. Because we believe this is a promise, this, this is something God has done in the past, that God's going to do, continue to do as we follow his will. Most of you uh, know that we just come back from a mission trip. Uh, this time we have nine people that we went together to, to China, to Harbin. And um, I want to say something from this mission trip and, and forward as we look into our church, how, how this church should, should move forward, to move, move towards God's will. I, I want you to look back a little bit. Um, this church, NBC SFV, Manor Baptist Church of San Fernando Valley, uh, was founded in 1979 by a group of mission-minded people. We started quite a while ago, huh? 1979. And constituted as a church in 1984. So it has been here for a while, in the valley. And we moved to this particular location in 92. This church, I want you to, to know, is founded by mission-minded people. At that time, only seven families, seven Chinese families, they live in the valley, and they asked their mother church, which is in Alhambra, say, we, can we start a Bible study group here? Can we start a home a Bible study here? And, and so they started. And they, they're, not, they're, they're not just want to uh, serve themselves, but they want to establish a place that, that God's message can be shared. People can come, can, be, can, be, can, can come and know the scripture and come to know the Lord. So this is what happened in uh, 79. Mission-minded people want to reach out to the lost, want to share the gospel. And... Uh, Around year 2000, our church, NBC SFV, became a missionary sending church. It's not really, it's not our desire or anything we plan really. We, we didn't really plan that much. It just happened. Uh, there are two couples. They dedicate themselves. They want to be a new missionary. They want to serve the Lord. Um, they took early re re retirement. Um, and uh, so these two couples, one went to uh, Central Asia. Uh, Andrew Lee, I'm sure some of you have heard him. He's, he's here many times to speak. Andrew and Karen Lee. And um, for the first six, seven years, they, they were in Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. And from 2006 and present time, they, were, they are in Taiwan. And their ministry, God called them to serve a very particular group in Taiwan. You know, there's a lot of foreign workers in Taiwan. Currently, there's about 650,000 foreign, foreign workers in Taiwan. People from Philippines, people from Vietnam, and uh, um, in the Indonesia, especially, they're seeking work in Taiwan, and uh, so it's, it's a huge number. There's six hundred fifty something thousand people in Taiwan, and and and, and Andrew and Karen, they they serve particularly um, uh, the the people from the Indonesia. 
And uh, they're, they, they are the biggest group. They're, they're, they're the largest foreign worker group um, in, in Taiwan. And they're about 250,000 uh, people uh, came from Indonesia to work in Taiwan. So they, 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 uh, they ask the churches, they uh, invite churches to come together to serve them and to help them uh, adjust uh, the life there. And also uh, in, the, in the process of reaching out, share the gospel with them. Because those people from in, in Indonesia, they will not have any opportunity to hear the gospel when they're, when, they're, when, when they're in their home country. Now they're working in Taiwan. So they had a great opportunity to hear the gospel. That's why Andrew and Karen, they took this opportunity and asked the churches to, to help them uh, spread this, uh, uh, they just take this opportunity to share the gospel with uh, those people that are from in Indonesia. And people from in Indonesia, as you know, they are mostly Muslim, uh, Muslim faith. And it's, very, it's, it's not easy to, to reach out, uh, to talk to them, to, to share with them uh, the gospel. But God opens the door for them. And, and if next time when, when Andrew came, allow him, uh, listen to him, and then what well, God has done tremendous work through their effort in Taiwan. It's wonderful. So we're proud of them. We're proud of Andrew and Karen, what they're doing in Taiwan. And another couple, uh, Bob and Amy Chen, most of you also, also knew, uh, know them. Um, they're in Harbin since um, 2000, uh, year two, 2000. And uh, when they first go, when they, when, they, when they first went there, they have no idea what God wanted to do. Because the they, only thing they know is, this is the place God wanted to go. So, so what they did at that time, was very courageous and very bold. They, they married the daughter, the only daughter, and they sell their home, sell their house, and they move to Harbin. And uh, actually, all those things, what they have done by faith, proved to be very, very important. Because the people there, local people, when they know this couple, what they have done, marry their daughter, sell their house, and move over to Harbin. You know, Bob and Amy, they grew up in Hong Kong. Harbin is way up north, a totally different area. And so local people, when they know this couple came, over, came you know, when to be with them, and, and they know these, these two people are for real. They are not just coming for a visit. They are coming to, 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 to stay. And so they, and so, so they trust them and they, and they continue to build relationship. And uh, it's just incredible. And in, in, in uh, about five, five, four, five, four years, they started a St. John Cultural and Educational Center right in, uh, in a new development area of city of Harbin, which is north of the Songhua Jiang River. And uh, the, the, the new development area is, called, is, is a college town. Uh, you know, in China, when they do things, they, they just do, you know, it's, a lot, it's, a, it's a large scale. And they actually, what they did is they moved um, 16 to 18 colleges, universities to the area. Some of them are new, some of them are from the old, older campus, they moved to the, the new development area. So they just built a, a college town there. And somehow God just provide a place, a, a lot, for uh, Bobby and Amy to build this uh, center, to build this uh, St. John uh, Culture and Educational Center. So they can serve the community, they can serve the people there, the, the student there, and for five, for four years. And in 2008, they start a kindergarten. Bob and Amy, when they went to, when they, when they were here in, in the States, they were uh, engineer, Bob is, Bob is an engineer, and uh, Amy is uh, um, working uh, 
uh, in industrial uh, uh, sector. And they have, no, they have no experience with education, especially um, uh, running a kindergarten. They have no idea. But somehow God just opened the door for them. And uh, since then, almost 10 years now, let me show you some picture. This is the uh, kindergarten. And that's the front door on, on the right, 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 right side. And this is the educational and uh, building and the main hall. And, uh, and, and, and the picture on the, on, on the, on the right is the, is the newest addition of the, on, on the campus, which, which is an indoor gym. It's a gym. It's a, it's a uh, beautiful, beautiful campus. And this time, uh, um, our mission team, we went there um, we just, just about, about a month ago. So that's a picture we took on the campus. And, and the bigger picture uh, showing all the faculties and workers that now they have. Uh, in, in 2008, there are only about five students and uh, four teachers. Now, they have over five, almost 500 students and almost 100 workers, faculty, um, teachers and workers there. Tremendous growth, tremendous. And, and not, only the, uh, not, only, not only the facility was very impressive, the worker of very, just incredible uh, a group of young people that serve there. And most importantly, these young people, because in China, you, you, you cannot, because even though this is a Christian institution, you cannot require anyone to, to be a Christian. So most of them are not Christian when they, when they first uh, come to this school, kindergarten. But nowadays, I, I, I'll, I'll say most of the key people, the leaders of this uh, uh, school are Christians. They came to know the Lord through the testimony, the model, the life that, that, uh, that, uh, that Bob and Amy have shown. And there's a tremendous story that uh, next time when they come, ask them to share with you. Very, very exciting. So uh, we went there this, uh, this time uh, and just again, able to witness, able to see what, I, what God has done uh, through this couple. It's just incredible. And uh, the, the picture we took again um, in front of the, uh, the door, the front door. And also that weekend, they had a, a special event. Oh, they, they have the, the, the parents and the kids. They have a, they have a, a, a how, 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 how to say, um, a game. It's Chinese says it's 运动会, uh, it's a 亲子运动会. Parents and kids, they join together, they have a, a, they just play games, they just uh, organize games, incredible time. And th this is what, this annual event that they, that they have. On the campus of this kindergarten, we also built an auditorium. This auditorium originally is just for the kindergarten. So when they have a major meeting, they can have a place to, to work with. But during the time when we built this auditorium, we, have a, we had a dream. We felt if one day this place can be a place for the Christians to come to worship. Wow, wow, it would be so nice. It's just a dream, actually, because in China, if you know something about Chinese, China policy, almost impossible. And also, this is an educational uh, institution. Education cannot be mixed with uh, uh, re re religion. In China is very strict 
on this. So this is almost a, uh, uh, just, a, just, just a dream. There's, there's no possibility. But we build, but we just pray, and hopefully something will change, something will happen. And um, amazing thing happened, did happen. Four years ago, as a local house church leader, and it's, it's a she, uh, a lady pastor, and she's very brave. And he has, she has been uh, planting churches in Harbin for many, many years. It has been, he has been arrested and persecuted many, many times. But, he con but she continued to serve, continued to, 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 uh, uh, um, to um, serve the Lord. And so when, they know, when, when she knew about this place, and she came straight to the, um, to the to city and also to the uh, religious bureau and, and just go through every channel and to apply and to get a permission so, they, so the Christ, local Christian can, can, be, can meet in this place. Finally, it's just, just incredible. How, how, how they did it, nobody knows. But somehow, he just got it. And, and government just allowed, him, allowed this particular pastor to gather his people and to worship, to, to meet every Sunday at this uh, sanctuary, which is the uh, auditorium of this kindergarten four years ago. And uh, we, we're so surprised, but we are very, we, we are very, very happy. We, we are so glad this, and this can happen. And our mission team actually wait for this long to go uh, because we want to be sure it's, 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 it's real. It's not just, uh, it, it's, not, it's not just say okay and then, then it turn out to be wrong. So four years later and every Sunday, um, people gather, worship in this place. And, and this is the choir, the church choir. And it's called Holy, the church, the Harbin Church of the Holy Word and the St. John Center Chapel. This, that's how they call this, this place. And uh, that particular Sunday, about a month ago, I, I was there preaching. And these are the people that, 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 that gather that Sunday, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's almost full. It's, it's just an incredible uh, uh, congregation that we, we were able to, to worship together and to sing together. And it's just, it's just incredible. Um, um, Susie's dad gave our mission team 100 copies of little, little uh, uh, pamphlet little booklet. Um, Susie's father made it him, him himself and contained the, uh, the Bible verses in Chinese. And, in, and his idea is that he wanted people to, to, to have this little book and to memorize the scripture. So he prepared a hundred copy of them, gave to me, and wanted to share in, in China. So I took that during that service and ask the people, uh, if, they, you, if you want this little booklet and promise me to, to memorize it, you can come and, and, and get it. So it just, I mean, they just, they, just, they, just, they just came forward and got it. So it, you, you, can, you can see uh, those people that have the little book, raise their hand, see that little book in their hand, and, 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 and ask them to, bring, to, to, to raise it. And to pray together, and say, and, and to promise that they want they they will they will they will do their best to memorize the the scripture. And when they do, when they done, I ask them to pass down the, 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 this little book, not just keep it for themselves, but also give to other people. Continue uh, uh, this this practice, and uh, it's, it's it's just incredible to see how people. Um, Join to worship uh, with the that, with the commitment to, to to learn scripture and the desire to know God's word. It's just an incredible uh, experience. So 
So from a mission-minded church to a missionary-sending church, I think the question for us today is, our church, this church, need to move forward to become a missional church. From mission-minded to missionary sending to become a real missional church. Missional is a, is a new word, it's, uh, meaning a church with clear mission. The church need to have a clear mission and also strive to finish that mission. The mission focused church. Year 2000, around that time, Mrs. Xu and I got also allow us to go to China, to Henan, to different places to serve in the house churches in China. And at that time, um, the churches are like this on the, on the left-hand side of the picture. Mostly older people, we get a little, little tiny, tiny place. When we sing, we cannot sing too loud. When we, when we, when we, when we go in there, we go in there during the night, then we stay there the whole week. And when we about the time to leave, we leave during at, at night too. We don't want any people to know that we were there. And actually, for the people that stay there, during the time of the training, they don't want neighbor to know that either. So they have to be so secretive and so careful. So that was about, 20, about 18, 17, 18 years ago. And uh, now, like I just I share with you, people can worship openly even a, even a house church, they can worship like this in Harbin. It's just incredible. It, it's just incredible. Of course, you, you can still hear people, churches being persecuted, their pastors being arrested. This it still happen. But China is a big place. In Harbin, people can worship openly. And, 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 and God's will can be shared uh, without any restriction in, 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 in this setting. So it, it is incredible. So a lot of things, a lot of things changes. A lot of remarkable things happen during this time. If you interest in this area, you want, if you really want to know how many Christians right now in China, and uh, what happened in China? What, what, uh, uh, how the church was growing for the last 20 years and things, things like that? If, if you're interested, you, you, you will be marveled. There are many, many um, information um, online you can search. Let me share with a few numbers with you. Some numbers are not quite, all these numbers are rough numbers because nobody knows exactly um, how many Christians, Chinese Christians in China. No one knows. But in 1949, when communists took over China, there's about one million uh, Protestant Christians. And from 1949 onward, China has gone through many, many um, hard, China, churches have gone through many hardships, uh, persecutions from 49 and on. And if you know uh, about Chinese history, modern history, 
uh, from 1966 to 1976, 10 years, that's cultural revolution. During that time, Chinese churches basically been shut down. Every, I mean, no, no church are allowed to worship, and, and all the pastors, known pastors were put in jail, and it, it's, it's the lowest point of, of Chinese uh, Christian and Christian church. But right after 1976, 77, 79, began to Chinese, China began to open, and the, and the, and the churches and Christians uh, experienced a, we, we call a, an ex explosion because uh, something, something great happened. Uh, the, 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 uh, people came to know the Lord and the Holy Spirit was working just, just at, in, in a tremendous rate. So by eight, nine, 1980, there's about three million, estimated three million Christians. Um, just pro Protestant. Okay. So that number, those two, those two numbers are, are, are um, pretty accurate. Okay. And, and the rest of the uh, uh, number, there are estimates. By year 2000, it's about 18 million. 2006, it's about, jumped to 70 million, including Catholics. And three years ago, 2014, it's about 133 million people. These are Christians. And there are many different numbers. Some number is even greater than what I posted here. And like I said, nobody knows how many Christians are in, in China. But for one thing, for sure, from year 2000 to right now, huge, huge growth, huge changes in China. If you look at that, uh, that graph, uh, the, 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 the picture on the, on, on, on the left, the most happen to be between year 2000 and right now, and also continuing this growing rate. And uh, there are people estimating by 2025, that will be that many people, and by 2030, many people estimate that China will be the largest Christian country in the world. Just imagine that. And we are right in the, right in the process of this change. When we serve the Lord, I, always, I often encourage our people, when you serve the Lord, not, not only you need to work, you need to put effort, you, you, you need to be very conscientious, but as when you serve the Lord, I often encourage my people, when you serve the Lord, you better watch what, what God is doing. Not just you doing things, but you need to watch what God is doing. Because when you notice what God is doing, then you better join God's work. Then you catch up with God's work. I think for our church, for NBC SLV, as we move, continue to move forward, we need to know what God has done great things in China. Not only because we are Chinese, but I think we need to know what God is doing. So we, as a church, we will work together and prepare ourselves for what's ahead. How? How to be a missional church? 
Let me just share briefly a couple of things. We need to be aware that we, as a mission church, there's a guiding principle. Church was born out of mission, needs to exist for mission, and eventually accomplish God's great commission. We need to, again, realize and need to, again, see very clearly, church, every church started by mission. And also, church need to exist for mission. And church has to carry out the great commission the Lord has given to us. If we realize this and we, if, we, if we hold this guiding principle um, and firmly, then this is a mission church. This is a missional church. So, I, so let me just lay out this with you before, before you. Church was born of a mission. Need to exist for mission and eventually accomplish the Lord's great commission. And the biblical promise, what I just shared with you early in the service, he who goes out weeping, bearing the seed of, for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is the promise God given us. And God promised to do great things. And he has done great things. And he will continue to do great things among us. And we need to hold on this promise and, and, and to work with God and to, and to continue uh, to be in the, in, in, in the will of God. Recently, we're, the, the Mandarin congregation, we're reading from 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians. And we just, again, reminded by the Lord. When, when Paul started uh, his, his work in Corinth, you know, Corinth is a Greek city and uh, full of um, 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 great things. It's a commercial city. It's, it's, a, it's a very rich city. And uh, that's why Corinth is, is the, 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 the society, the, the, the life are quite elusive. And, and there are many uh, um, uh, temples and there, 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 there are many idol worship. Um, and also the, 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 their life, is, uh, because of the commercial, because of, uh, because of the, uh, the uh, the location of the of the city, the Corinth, um, it's very complicated and, and also very corrupt. And so, so when Paul got into the city, he realized this is a very difficult place to uh, to build a church to share the gospel. He's he, he's almost to quit to go to go to another city. But somehow, during the night, this story happened, and recorded in, in Acts chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Paul in the night, in, in a vision, told him that, do not be afraid, and promised that I'll be with you. And God says, I have many in this city who are my people. Even though people is, the city is corrupt, the city is full of mild, malice and this is a terrible, terrible place, but God told Paul, I have many in this city who are my people. I believe this is a vision and also a conviction for a missional church. As, as we continue to 
to meet here, continue to, to, to worship here, continue to do ministry here, I think we need to remember this picture, what God has given to Paul. God has a lot of people here in this city which are his people, God's people. Not yet. They're not yet God's people. That They are. God's, God's going to call them. God's going to God is going to use the church to reach out to, to them. And we, as a missionary church, we need to believe there are people in this city which are God's. God's people. They are lost right now. They don't know that they're, that they're God's people. But this is the reason God put us here. To reach out to them. To share the gospel. So let me just share last and to, to close three oh no four to do list that we can do together first of all pray for yourself and the church so that together we may truly be a missional church for the lord at this time and age believe that god is great doing great things pray that we are part of it pray that we are in the middle of it, that, that God can use us. Number two, live a life that will glorify God and begin right now. If this church can reach out to, to people, we need to glorify God in our life. If our life doesn't do, if our life doesn't do that, we cannot. There is no way people will listen to us or you'll even come to us to hear the gospel. So we need to realize we need to live a life that's glorifying God, and we need to begin right now. Number three, prepare yourself ready to pray for other people. It's, 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 it's not hard, but it's very important. I believe if our church, our people, can be ready to pray for others, prepare yourself ready to pray for others, Actually, this is one of the, the assignment that our mission team members need to do. During our training, each of our mission team members, we need to be ready to pray for other people. When we talk to people, when we visit people, after a few minutes, when we are about to close, we need to pray for them. So during that conversation, you need to prepare yourself how to pray for this particular family, particular pe person, what's, what's their need, how to bring this before the Lord. And that kind of practice, that kind of uh, prayer we need, we, need, we need to be able to do. So just imagine if, if every, every one of you here, English, English congregation, Mandarin congregation, every one of us, we can be a prayer warrior for other people, prayer partners for other people. Just begin to do that. Prepare yourself to pray for other people. Number four, prepare yourself ready to share the gospel. Don't just, don't think that that only the pastor can do this. In our mission team, we, we train our people, each member, to share the gospel. Doesn't have to be long. Need to be concise, to the point, and with conviction, share the gospel. Just imagine if, e if each one of us, we can do this from our own experience, based on the scripture, share the gospel. I believe if we can do this, we are a missional church. We can accomplish the great commission, what God has given to us. We are in the tremendous time. The opportunity God has given us is incredible. I do hope that uh, 
we continue to see God doing great things for us, among us, through us, and help us to be faithful to his call. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the church because it is you that established the church, start the church. And you continue to build the church for your purpose, for your kingdom. And as we continue to witness your wonderful work, wonderful hand, Father, we know you want our, our church to be a missional church. There are many, many people in this city, which is yours. They need, to need, they need to hear the gospel. They need to come before you. They need, they need to repent. They need to receive your salvation. Father, help this church be missional. Not only be mission-minded, not only just sending missionaries, Father, help us to be a missional church that we can accomplish the purpose of the church, what you have started. We want to glorify you. We want to share your gospel. We want to pray for other people so they can come to know you. Father, again, this morning, we bring, we bring, we present ourselves before you and pray that um, this message is not just for now, but Father, help us to do what you want us to do. We thank you. May our prayers be pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.